Aside from incredible history, the Ming Xiaoling is also famous for the incredible scenery, specifically the Shendao or the uh, Spirit Road, renowned as the most beautiful 600 meters in Nanjing during autumn because of the gorgeous fall foliage. Here's that marvelous Nanjing autumn color I previewed at the end of my last video. We're at entrance number three to the Ming Xiaoling, the mausoleum of Hongwu Emperor. The trees stand like a row of imperial guards protecting this grand mausoleum which is located very close to another Nanjing landmark, the Sun Yat-sen Mausoleum. Both tombs are situated on the Purple Mountain. This English name is a direct and almost complete translation of the Chinese name Zijinshan, meaning Mount Purple Gold. It came to be known by this name due to the peak of purplish rock that supposedly emanates a purplish golden aura when viewed from afar. This golden mountain is also the origin of one of Nanjing's old names, Jinling. Some segments of the roughly 10 minute drive up the lush mountain have indeed turned golden. This morning, we are going to visit Ming Xiaoling. That is the mausoleum of Hongwu Emperor, Ming Dynasty's founder. Um, it is also a, a founding mausoleum of sort because it sets the example for and influences um, the forms of uh, dozens of imperial mausoleums in the centuries to come. Aside from incredible history, the Ming Xiaoling is also famous for the incredible scenery, specifically the Shendao or the uh, Spirit Road or the Sacred Way. Uh, it is uh, renowned as the most beautiful 600 meters in Nanjing during autumn because of the gorgeous fall foliage. That's what we're here for. Whereas funeral roads in Europe function as actual roads to carry corpses to authorized burial sites, the spirit road in Chinese culture is more symbolic by design. Elaborate spirit roads were only built for important figures like emperors, intended to guide their spirits toward heaven. The statues on both sides represent different aspects of imperial and divine powers, and today they serve as the perfect foreground for the magnificent fall foliage. We are so mesmerized by the splendor, we end up spending the entire morning here. We didn't visit the mausoleum itself today. Maybe next time. It is an incredible world heritage. The mausoleum of Hongwu Emperor uh, is located here because Nanjing was the initial capital of uh, the Ming Dynasty. Uh, actually, long before that, uh, back to around like 200 AD, Nanjing was already the uh, capital of the uh, Six Dynasties. So uh, Nanjing has long been a center of human activities. Uh, not only human activities, but affluent human activities. Uh, so that is why uh, Nanjing cuisine is also sometimes referred to as Jing Shu Da Chai, literally the great cuisine of the national capital and Jiangsu provincial capital. Uh, I'll try some of that later, but not today, because we are going to try something from the other end of the spectrum. Ya Shu Fen Si Tang, the down to earth duck blood vermicelli. Um, it is um, likely one of the first things that comes to mind when you mention Nanjing cuisine uh, is that famous. I'm not sure if it is the most representative food in the eyes of folks of Nanjing, but it is one of the most represented outside Nanjing. It is probably Nanjing's number one culinary export to the rest of the country. Many restaurants that serve the food outside Nanjing associate themselves with the city. Over the years, I've had it on a few occasions in other areas. Those either tasted too gamey or too bland. Honestly, this broth here looks bland too. Nothing appealing at first sight, but just one sip is enough to distinguish it from the rest of the pack. Robust flavor, clean aftertaste. About one third of the way through the bowl, I added some chili oil and vinegar for a change, but nothing game changing here. I actually regret adding the condiments so early. Would be wiser to enjoy more of the ducky and delightful soup in its initial form. The soup alone is sufficient to explain why the eatery just blows up at lunchtime. So man, the place was packed. You could still see a lot of people outside. Uh, so what I had was the uh, Xiao Pan Di Te Se 
Piazza Francesca is like the uh, upgraded version, you know, named after the restaurant. So you get the Fu Monty, uh, not only the duck blood and vermicelli, but also a uh, duck gizzard and intestine. These are like sort of uh, standard at some places, um, sometimes considered upgrade. Uh, but an extra here is the uh, Guo Ba scorched rice, uh, which adds a bit of a texture to the bowl. There are the soft duck blood, tender duck meat, fatty duck tongue, bouncy duck gizzard, pasty duck liver, springy duck intestine, mushy daikon, stretchy vermicelli, and spongy turned squishy fried tofu puff. Then top all that with crispy guava scorched rice, which miraculously remains mostly crunchy even after bathing in a hot soup for 10 minutes. If the guava isn't enough to satisfy your craving for crunchiness, sprinkle flakes from the shao bean pastry. I learned that trick from this grey-haired old lady seated next next to me, who's merrily slurping on vermicelli by herself. Uh, and also we got this. Uh, shao bean is a kind of uh, layered pastry. The famous local shao bean here is called ya you shu, uh, literally like duck fat uh, pastry. Um, and this is the sweet version. We finished the uh, savory salty version inside. I heard that back in the days, uh, people didn't really have much of a liking for duck fat because of the gamey flavor. But the yao su shao bin changed all that. So that's why it is today an indispensable component of Nanjing, the duck capital, Yadu. Just as the Ya Yao Shu duck fat pastry changed people's perception of duck fat, the Ya Shui Fen Sitang duck blood and vermicelli soup at this specialty restaurant also redefines my previously mediocre impression of this well known Nanjing delicacy. I look forward to trying another store during my next trip to the city. Now it's time for more leaf peeping. Zai jian!